Hey! Welcome back to Cosmic Frontiers. So in the last previous episodes, we... Well, I've been working a bit around the base. And I've been working on mainly infrastructure. I wanted to have a most uh, robust infrastructure. So everything meaning auto-crafting and passive resources. Uh, but yes, if we come here to our main controller, as you can see, it is a bit more lively. There are a bunch of P2P channels. And a bunch of energy being consumed. This is all of our liquids storage. We are full of methane and we are not using it, so let's just void it so we can keep keep on producing those uh, those noble gases, those noble gases. If we come to the manufacturing facility, we have all of our blast furnaces. Down here we have a bunch of one block machines, which are mainly being used for auto crafting. Down here we will have our clean room which we use for circuit making and everything is properly connected to, um, to A2 uh, but we are ready to keep on progressing and finish the HP chapter which basically we are just there we are just there into completing all of the HP this seems a lot of, of things, of quests to, to complete but most of them is just processing lines well, not just <laughs> There is a bit of, uh, of trick inside those processing lines, uh, but we are only missing brutal processing and thus titanium. We are missing rare earth processing, which will get us uh, neodymium, neodymium, neo, 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 neodymium, as well as other other dusts. And we are we are also missing the first part of the plat line, which is the platinum, the platinum last dust. And with all of this, we should be able to enter into EV. Now concerning Cosmic Frontiers, I'm still thinking what to do, if to post this series or not. I'll do quite an announcement later in the month, maybe by the end of the month. Also saying stuff around the, the, the state of the channel. But yeah, let's just start with, with all of the plans. So in this episode we are not going to do everything. <laughs> uh, but what I want to do is get into the moon. Or, well, not get into the moon, but get the materials necessary to get into the moon. As well as all of the materials that we require for the catalyst to enter into the other garden. And in the next episode, we will look into the EV machine hull. And all of the uh, all of the rare earth processing. As well as maybe part of the plat of the plat line. I don't know if to do this now or just kind of patch craft it. Especially because platinum is is quite a good material for for where is it? There is it for IV IV wiring, which would be pretty 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 nice in order to to use as um, as wiring to whenever we enter into EV. Oh yeah, we can come here to our resource facility, enter through this small hut. And right here I want to at least start uh, putting all of the special or processing lines. I still need to move here the chromite uh, processing in order to get chromium, easy chromium. But also whenever we get into the into the under garden, we will be able to get, uh, to get ruby, which is quite a good source of chromium. But let's start with, uh, with rutile. And there is a lot of machines that we need. <laughs> All of these machines, they also account for all of the loop, uh, all of the recycling loops. Or at least most of them. And that's what we are going to be working right now. Now, all of the brutal processing starts from here, from a mixer, using small piles of bauxite and sodium hydroxide. We also have a receipt with regular bauxite dust. The thing is that this requires an AV mixer, which we don't have. So we have to stick to this, uh, to this mixer right here and manage with small piles. Now in order to get the small piles, we will use a packer and we can have a mixer here for the sodium hydroxide solution and then we can have another mixer for the regular uh, outside hydroxide solution. And so what we are going, what we are going to do is have a storage bus here. This is going to be for outside. And we will have a high priority for this. And we will also get a storage pass here. This will be for sodium hydroxide. And again, a large priority. Now, we do have a bunch of sodium hydroxide. <laughs> but 
this one we should be able to use it for another thing. Uh, the thing is that in all of this brutal line, uh, there is a recycle recycling step, uh, which we will be getting a lot of sodium hydroxide uh, back, and we will get a surplus of it. So yes, we are even gaining more uh, sodium hydroxide, and that is something uh, something interesting. We can connect both of these, and we should be able to right here. This is the main net, and this is the subnet. But we can do something basic, so we can have an interface. Here, we will request not sodium hydroxide, actually. We will only request bauxite, and then we will have a storage bus here. This will be on extract only, and we'll have a higher uh, priority. Well, no, we'll have a normal priority, and we will part partition this into bauxite. So we should be getting bauxite. Well, not really, because this doesn't have to be in storage. This has to be an interface. Uh, that's quite a <laughs> quite a small a small thing to consider. And we can grab a conveyor and set this into import, and we should imp be importing both sides. Now, the last thing is that we need to provide with these machines with some energy, and we can do something like this. <laughs> It doesn't look the best, uh, but it will work. And we are having a small piles of bauxite, which is being sent into this mixer. Now up here, we can put an infinite water cover. This will provide it with water. And let's get some sodium hydroxide. Let's let's say we want to get 48, and let's just throw it there. And this will produce a, produce sodium hydroxide solution. Together with some bauxite, we'll get sodium hydroxide bauxite. Now the output of this, we can just send it directly into a fluid heater, which has to be on circuit number zero. And we also have to provide this with some power. And this will get us heated sodium hydroxide bauxite. The heated sodium hydroxide bauxite, we need to mix it. No, we need to centrifuge this. So we can put a centrifuge. We can send it here. And then if we put this at circuit number zero, and we also provide this with some power as well. After 12 seconds, we should be getting red mood and sodium aluminate solution. So yes, we can just work through all of this. Now this has a stop because we are out of ooh, because we are out of um, sodium hydroxide solution. That's fine uh, because we want to to make all of this a a loop. So we can just start with. Uh, with centrifuging uh, these buckets of uh, heated sodium hydroxide. As you can see, it will centrifuge uh, 12 buckets at a time. Now we get red boot and sodium aluminate solution. This one, we can have a storage bus, which will be set on extract only. And we will partition this, just in case. And about priorities, it will be stay like that. We don't really need to, to set priorities. But we get 36 packets of sodium aluminate solution and 12 packets of red mood. Let's start with the red mood. So we'll, we'll leave a small space here in order to separate all of the processes. We are going to have a mixer here. This we need an interface. This will send red mood as well as hydrochloric acid. Now for hydrochloric acid, we can request it from our main net. I think there is also a recycling step for hydrochloric acid, uh, but we will we will be requesting this. Now we should be getting both liquids here. We can grab a pump and we can just pump uh, all of the liquids. So we are getting we are getting pretty much slowly but steady red mood, and then we also get the hydrochloric acid. Now why is this not processing? Because it has no energy, of course. <laughs> we can do something like this. I'll give it energy. And we will be getting neutralized red mood from here. Now the neutralized red mood, we are just going to send it directly into a centrifuge. And this one, again, if we give it some power, <laughs> uh, we should be able to get some goodies. Between those, those goodies, we will be getting red mood slurry, diluted hydrochloric acid, and salt water. And from these two is where we can uh, we can recycle the the hydrochloric acid. 
And I think it's something that we're going to be doing as well. Now, into this centrifuge, we are going to set a, a storage bus as well, which is here. A storage bus, extract only. We are going to partition the same. And priorities are going to be staying the same. There are some things we need to do with this. Let's start with the recycling. So we got, I think, 16 or 12 uh, buckets of red mood. Something like that. Yeah, we got 12 buckets of red mood. So it's times 3, 24. We use 24 buckets of hydrochloric acid. We do get 24 buckets of hydrochloric acid back. So that's good. <laughs> as well as 6 uh, more buckets of hydrochloric acid. So we do get a recycling here. So what we can do is just take out the hydrochloric acid from here, from my net. And let's also take this one from here. Now, this uh, red mood slurry, we need to send it into another centrifuge. And you might be asking then why I, I won't just uh, send it directly. The thing is that I don't know why, but I don't I don't get the correct filters to work with these machines. It is, it is more likely there is something I'm doing wrong. So we will be doing everything that requires moving liquids. Uh, when it has uh, multiple outputs, you see A2 instead of regular uh, uh, Greg Tech uh, pipes and sending it directly uh, from machine to machine. In this case, we are doing it like this. We are sending it directly to a machine because they don't have multiple outputs. It's just one output. This sodium illuminate, for example, we are having a storage bus because it has multiple outputs. Uh, just because of that. So let's continue with this. So we are going to be doing something a bit um, <laughs> a bit dangerous, uh, to say the least. Or maybe not. No, it's not going to be dangerous. So we need a centrifuge. We will need a chemical reactor, an electrolyzer, and a distillery. Why this centrifuge is at HP and not the rest of machines? So the red mode slurry. What we can do, what we want to do is centrifuge it in order to get a chance for rutile. We will get a 95% a chance of getting rutile plus a 3% uh, per each tier. So that's why we we want uh, we want uh, to have a higher uh, higher tier machine for this process right here. We also get some other goodies like vanadium dust. We get banded iron. We get quicklime and we get alumina as well as zero buckets of nothing. <laughs> so what we can do here is uh, request roof and interface. We can request the red muslury and we can grab a pump, of course. We can set the pump and import. We should be importing the red muslury. And now what we need to do is grab some HV energy from upstairs. So that's why this is something you don't want to try at home, please. <laughs> Don't do what I'm doing right now. It is dangerous. You have the chance of exploding your base. So please don't do it. I do it because I'm just a potato. I don't have brain cells. I have sprouts. So, how do I want to do this without exploding my base? I think what I'll do is just do something like this. And hopefully my base doesn't explode. So I'll grab uh, from, from here. <laughs> and... We can just, yeah, we can just do this. It is a bit, uh, not the best, <laughs> the best looking solution, but it will work. And this is centrifuging the red mood slurry in order to get a chance of a lot of goodies. Let's see if we get, and we got Rutal on the first chance. That's nice. Now all of these, uh, all of these materials, we want to send it directly to main, to our main net. So what we are going to do is set a storage bus. This is going to be on insert only. We will have a higher priority. And we will filter this with all of these goodies that uh, we want to output to our mainnet. Uh, Rutail, uh, we also want to automatize the, the processing. So inside a large chemical reactor, together with some carbon and chlorine, we can get titanium tetrachloride and some carbon monoxide, which this can be electrolyzed to get the carbon back. The titanium tetrachloride, we can put it through a blast furnace together with some magnesium to get hot titanium and magne magnesium chloride 
And this one we can also electrolyze it in order to get chlor chlorine and the magnesium back. So yes, this is uh, there is a proper recycling loop. We are not going to be doing that now. I just want to have uh, titanium as fast and as quick as possible. Especially because this is how we are generating energy. This is so... <laughs> This is such a disaster. Um, not recommendable. Not recommendable. So all of that brutal, I'll be patch crafting it. Well, patch processing it. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, don't do that, please. Don't do that. You can do better. We can set an interface here. And what we can do is just, uh, just set up auto output on the back. And we should be having brutal on our mainnet. There is it, 15 rutile. 15 rutile from its six pockets of um, of red mood slurry. That is quite nice. Now six pockets uh, we get from uh, 12 neutralized red mood. Uh, 12 red mood. 12 red mood we get from 48 heat and sodium hydroxide bauxite. And 48 of these we get from uh, 29 times 2 and battered mats, we get from 58, um, 58 bauxite. If we were to electrolyze the bauxite directly uh, from 60 bauxite, we would be only getting 4 rutile and a bunch of aluminum. But aluminum, there are better ways of getting it. So yes, it is worth it to set everything here. Now, uh, the only thing that we are left to set up is the hydrochloric recycling as well as the sodium aluminate solution processing. Now we are going to start we are going to start processing some brutal and as I said this part of the process we are going to be doing it uh, manually. So we are going to batch craft this. I'm thinking of batch crafting this in a stacks of 64. So this is pretty much very simple. Brutal. Brutal we need to put it through a large chemical reactor together with some carbon and chlorine. And I don't think there is any circuit number. So we can set up the chlorine right here. Actually, let me grab a super tank. <laughs> this is going to be simpler. So some chlorine. We need rutal and the carbon. 20 seconds we are going to be getting two fluids. So we need two super tanks. I think I have one super tank uh, that I'm not using in another place. So we can set up two super tanks here, one for titanium tetrachloride and the other one for carbon monoxide. So with this we have now 64 buckets of titanium tetrachloride and 128 of carbon monoxide and nothing of chlorine. So the carbon monoxide we can basically just electrolyze this to get some oxygen and the carbon back. However, the titanium tetrachloride, what we have to do with this is Grab any any blast furnace. In this case, I'll be just using this one. I want to empty this input hatch. And what we can do is input the titanium tetrachloride together with some uh, with some magnesium. And this in 20 seconds should give us hot titanium ingots, as well as some magnesium chloride. Now the hot titanium, we can set the this set support bus that we have here. Titanium in here. So whenever it finishes crafting one, we cool them uh, directly. And with that, we get our first ingot of titanium. Very nice. Titanium ingot. Of course. <laughs> we need to complete all of these quests, right? Um, why? Why do you want me to grab all of the items? Are these check marks? These are check marks, but they don't skip. Sadly. And then we get the titanium quest. Nice. Titanium ingot. We have almost 16 titanium right now. Look at that. Look at that. Now, of course, the thing that uh, with Goblins Frontiers, we don't only need titanium to enter into EV. We also need luminous and ethereum. Let's finish with, uh, with the NASA workbench and the stuff we did for the tier 1 rocket and all of the equipment that we need to go to the moon and then we will get into the other garden which is basically exploration a bunch of exploration <laughs> now let's assemble 
the rocket, our first rocket. For that, of course, we will need a NASA workbench. So let me grab my screwdriver and we can get the NASA workbench. Rocket science. Uh, let's put it right here, for example, for now. Oh, it is small. I, I thought it would be bigger. Anyway, we are going to be using this in order to produce our rocket. I suppose you can automatize rocket production. <laughs> Why would you like this? I don't know, but you can. Now let's start with the rocket. It is fairly simple to craft. All of this is very easy. Uh, the one important thing will be the tier 1 rocket plating. For this we need an implosion compressor and we also need welded rocket plating. For this we need a forming press and four plates of black steel, galvanized cedar steel, titanium and mana steel. So this should be fairly simple to do. Here I have all of the ingots and we only need to throw them through the bender. Now while that's crafting, let's also grab the controller for the implosion compressor. Can I do this? I can do this. Implosion compressor. The only machine you want to go boom. Yes. I have a forming press here. We can just put it right here, for example. It's not something that we are going to be using that much now. And we can also assemble the, the implosion compressor. Nice. Now, what we need to do is grab the plates very quick. I suppose they are already crafted. 24 titanium, 24 mana steel, 24 galvanized, and 24 black steel. Then we need to throw all of this into the forming press. This should be on circuit number one. And 8 seconds per each welded rocket plating. That is fairly nice. Now at the same time, here on the implosion compressor, on circuit number one as well, yeah, we only need to throw the welded rocket and it will explode <laughs> and we will be getting the tier one rocket plating. Now I suppose the receipt actually would require TNT, but there is not, so let's just take advantage of that. <laughs> let's do the last three. And that's how you get our seats tier 1 rocket plating. Now the next thing should be fairly easy. We need one steel engine. We need four rocket fins. And finally the nose cone for the rocket. Oh no, we also need stainless steel drums. This is pretty easy as well. So two seats stainless steels. And if we look for a circuit number two assembler, we can just throw all of this. And we should be getting the stainless steel drums. Now let's go to the NASA workbench. And we can just throw everything. Oh, look at those animations. How cool. <laughs> so we can do, throw the stainless steel drums. The rocket fin. The fins. And the steel engine. And we can get our tier 1 rocket. Baby's first rocket. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. So cool. We have a rocket. Just chilling here. That is very nice. Now, I really don't know how Ad Astra works. I suppose, yes, we need a launch pad as well. Now, do I need one or nine? <laughs> That's the thing. Um, it's fairly easy. Uh, three titanium and seats stainless steel. We can do this now. No, do we? I have a circuit number 5 here. We can craft our first launch pad. And let's set this one... Oh, it's, it is also large. <laughs> it is also fairly large. Let's put it here. And I suppose we have to put the rocket in here. And there is it, a rocket. Look at this. Now, of course, we cannot use it. We need to fill this. And there are still some machines I would need to craft, as well as some equipment. So yeah, I suppose stuff like the nano suit should also work uh, properly um, on the moon. Yes, it has oxygen. It has oxygen uh, storage. So all of this should properly work. 
Am I going to do this? Not really. Because for this we need the Energium. Energium requires Rupee. I don't have Rupee. Yeah. So, yes, we cannot quite yet do this, uh, this armor right here. First we need to go into, into the other garden. But we should be able to craft a proper jet suit. No. Yes. Maybe. No. Not really. Uh, but the, re the regular space... No, neither that one. The regular spacesuit? Yes, we can do the spacesuit. <laughs> this one, we can do it. But we cannot upgrade this into netherite. Well, I don't think we can upgrade this. Yes, we have to stick to the regular spacesuit. Should be easy to craft though. It's just polytetraethylene, poly stainless steel and titanium. Nothing really, really that hard. We should also be able to get us a large tank. Fairly simple as well. And I think that's everything we should we should need. I think for that we will need the rocket fuel though. Um, but yeah, this should be fairly easy to craft as well. And it's just methanol, ammonia, hypochlorous acid, which is water and chlorine. Yeah, this is fairly easy to craft. Everything is fairly easy to craft. We can even do it right now. And not worry about it. Um... I think there is a receipt conflict. conflict. Well, it can it can be a conflict because yeah, this is kind of weird. <laughs> um, how do I do this now? Because I suppose if I send this, it will craft a boot. Hopefully not. This circuit number two, circuit number two. Yeah, it crafted the boot. Um. I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want that. I will have to do this. <laughs> there is it. <laughs> it crafted. Let's just say it's crafted. But now we can come here. And hopefully this works. It works. Nice. And we have rocket fuel in a rocket. And this should be able to go to the moon uh, now. We have all of the spacesuit. We have extra rocket fuel just in case. And we should be ready for that. But that's going to be for next episode. For now, let's just focus on getting all of the things that we need to get into the under garden. So I've prepared myself a bit. I had one... Uh, one of these uh, slumbering leachable swords. So I just basically upgraded into a waking leachable plate. Leech, leech plate. I wanted to also upgrade this into the awakened uh, version, but I couldn't find one extra runic tape tablet. I have two here and I need one more, <laughs> which I don't have. I also have another, well, more swords from Simply Swords mod. Uh, but I think with these two swords, the Waking Leech Plate and the Ember Lash, we are going to be just fine. I really haven't prepared that much of equipment. <laughs> it's just very basic, I suppose. This one I've, I've just got from just exploring. I got with myself a couple of Totem of Undyans. I have my Arch, Archmate uh, Spellbook and my Blue Steel Drill. And of course my Battle Mage uh, Armor. I could use my Terrastial set but I think with this is going to be enough. Although maybe I should wear this one instead of the of this one because this will give me a passive region. Now, why do we need some equipment? It's because we are going to go back to to the to the other. Um, for this, we are going to look for the keys. Each one of the keys are dropped by a different uh, a different boss and. Yes, we do need this um, to continue with, uh, with with the mod pack, and we do have to get them in order so we can do the the quests. So let's go very quick to the either, and we need to go in the search of these uh, these bosses. And here is my cast collector, which doesn't work. It is still not working. <laughs> Weird, uh, but yes, it is what it is. So right there is one of the bosses that we need to fight, the Valkyrie. Um, 
the thing is that this is a this will give us the silver key and i want to do this in order so we need to go first for the slider for the big uh, big cube there is it yes this is the entrance now we need to look for the for the actual boss <laughs> of course listen here soul keeper some darts there is the boss let me just you know go around and try to look for stuff maybe there is something interesting well here is the boss uh, the thing with this boss is that we need to uh, to damage this with a pickaxe now what i want to try is is the break spell act like a pickaxe it doesn't okay so it's going to be quite slow this <laughs> Uh, because we are going to need to use my drill. Let me just set a waypoint here, just in case. I die. And let's start with this. This should be easy. Well, easy. <laughs> I'm almost dead now. <laughs> no. I also forgot to equip my... My good armor. And that's it, the bronze key. Of course we can claim this quest, and we can save this one. We also get a, a small chest, which we can open with a key, and we get a bunch of goodies. As well as runic tablet, Ooh, so we can actually upgrade this, uh, this one now. Now the next boss here will be the Valkyrie Queen. For this one we have to collect some metals. So the first thing we have to do is exterminate some of these uh, of these Valkyries. And actually I have already a, a teleport here. That's that is quite quite nice. I'll put another one. Wait, 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 wait. Pause, pause, pause. <laughs> Post, 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 please. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> please, please, please. Post, 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 post. Let's post. Okay, those should be all of the medallions. <laughs> I just died once. <laughs> that is fine, I suppose. Now let's look for the for the actual uh, actual boss. And here is it. Ui, you're here on the door, waiting for me. <laughs> no, you, my friend, um, I wish to fight you. Yes, of course I wish. Um, I'm ready to have the medals right here. I hope I don't die. My friend, please work. <laughs> Didn't work. There is it. <laughs> it was not the the most fair <laughs> combat, I suppose, but uh, we got it. <laughs> uh, that's what uh, that's what matters. We get the dupe of the key. We save it, and we can open the chest. We get more good food. We get the Valkyrie Ads, and Encanted Art. And also we get the Valkyrie Armor. Uh, good thing, we only died once, <laughs> sorry, twice. Is it good? Not really, but it is what it is. So let's look for the last boss. I'm finding a bunch of sliders, a bunch of Valkyrie Queens, but not a single... Uh, <laughs> Not a single... What was this called? A sun spirit. Not a single sun spirit a structure. I know they are rare, but I don't think they are this rare. <laughs> there is one here. <laughs> there is one right there. The entrance should be this one. We can put the waste here, just in case we die. 
and let's turn off all of these <laughs> these fires and this is going to be a bit more difficult especially because it won't receive damage directly from a sword so we need to give them back some uh, some icy icy bolts i think we should also be consuming this one and have a totem of undying so we can just start i'll eat one of the uh, big encantants Oy. and we should be waiting for some uh, for some balls that kind of ball and we have to give it back to him of course um we have to aim, right? <laughs> Something like that. It will spawn one of those things. Uh, which we need to, to kill it. Well, we really don't need to kill it, but it is best. So it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't bother us. It does deal a great deal of damage. So it is good to get it. And there is it. <laughs> there is the gold key. Nice. Now let's also trade the gold key and get one extra. We can save this one and this last one we can use it in the chest. From which we get a bunch more goodies. Now with the keys what we can do is craft the catalyst. Uh, we need a heart of the sea and an HP circuit. We should have both. I have a Heart of the Sea, as well as a microprocessor assembly. And what we are only missing is some source oil extract. 12 buckets. Um, yes, I have to batchcraft uh, some of this. Yeah. I will need a bunch of dirty mage blooms slurry. So first we have to wash the mage bloom. Then this one we can macerate it into shared mage bloom in an LCR together with some water and potted mana we should be able to get uh, Dirty Mesh Bloom Slurry in a mixer together with Benzin we should be able to get the Biphasic Soul Source Extract and then we only need to centrifuge this uh, of course I'm processing some Chaco Pirate here <laughs> and there we will get our Source Oil Extract we also get events in back, so it is possible to to loop all of this process as soul soil extract is both used on source diesel and also in aquadine uh, aquadine solution and I think this is for the green aquadine which is used on thunder charge and aquadine which is used on all of this to get all of this to get the super fuel uh, mark one. And this is of course used on the Naquadine reactor to get energy. But this is a very, very, very future <laughs> future thing. The source and rich water, we can distill this back into some source oil extract. Uh, but I think what we are going to do is just uh, just void this. Now in a circuit number two assembler, which will be this one for now, <laughs> we can throw the source oil extract and all of these things and we should be able to get our catalyst. And there we go, the catalyst. To the deepest depths. And that's how we should be able to enter into the Undergarden. But both entering to the Undergarden and the Moon will be for the next episode, which will be where we will enter into Eevee. Yes, we are just there. And anyway, this is the end of the episode. If you're still here, Thank you for watching, and as always, I hope you have a better day, because it can always be better. And I'll see you on the next episode. Mm, bye!